Good morning, y'all. Today, I want to talk to you about this gorgeous, incredible hydrangea hedge and how I intend on supporting these hydrangeas this season. If you've been following along with me, you know these Incrediballs do a pretty good job of holding up their blooms. But because we have some interesting weather sometimes of the year, sometimes we get wind that blows the opposite or storms that come the opposite of our natural weather pattern here, and they come from this way and they bounce, the wind bounces against the house kind of blows these hydrangeas and then they look really droopy for the rest of the season kind of want to lean forward quite a bit and because they're already wanting to stretch this way because there's no sun coming from the other direction this year i'm going to be supporting them a little bit so uh, last year i purchased some supports from gardener supply company and i'll show those to you right now they're these right here they kind of come in a natural patina color and you assemble them when they come in and so i have six of them all six of those plant supports cost almost $150 last year. Um, and so I was like, never again, we're not doing that. We're gonna look at alternatives this year. And so I went to my local Menards. If you do not live in the Midwest and you do not have a Menards, I know our local Ace carries these two. Home Depot and Lowe's may. I will tell you that our local Home Depot only carries three foot lengths of them. But what I'm gonna be doing today is showing you how to make these simple plant supports right here. And these will rust a little bit and kind of patina over time, but I just made simple hoops. Like we were creating a tiny little hoop house or covering some veggies to protect them from a late frost. And I'm gonna use the gardener supply ones in front, which have a little loop around the front to prevent them falling this way and then i'm going to use the hoops on either side to prevent them from splaying out too much that way and hopefully that will keep it contained you can see i've already got this one done now i'm using a little thinner bit of metal those hoops that i made last year were from a little thicker pieces of metal and they cost quite a bit more almost twice as much it just depends you don't want something that's going to be so flexible you still want something that's going to provide some rigidity but i will show you the ones i've got right quick so the size rods that i used last year we'll compare the two and get a little better location here so you can see better these right here maybe so last year i picked the one on the left and see how much a little bit thicker it is but these smaller ones are still super rigid you can see me bend them here that's enough support for these plants now these rods are six foot tall uh, basically and that means that when you bend them you'll have a good enough substance upright the three foot tall ones if you do them you're only going to end up with less than one and a half of height so if you have really tiny plants that you want to plant uh, those may work well but these right here the thinner size is around five to seven dollars a piece and because i needed so many of these i had to order or buy 12 of them i didn't want to get the thicker amount because i would end up spending another 150 dollars. so instead i spent like 70 uh, but these things will last a really long time for me and if you subscribe to the bbc and watch uh, gardener's world with monty don uh, then you may have seen him do this on that show and I know many of you may not have the capabilities to watch The Gardener's World through the BBC, and so I'm going to show you how he does it today. We're just going to focus on bending them into a U, but you can also, after you bend them into a U, place a piece of wood across them and then also bend them into more of the shape that I showed you from Gardener Supply, which has this hoop in front and then straight legs down so we're going to step into the gardening bed briefly to get a big tree trunk and that's what you want and if you're a short king or a short queen this may be a difficult task for you because the length of your arm span typically reaches the length of your height and so right around six foot here and you'll need to be able to pull this back now that doesn't mean you can't do it but it may be a little bit more difficult if you are a shorter person to do it so you want to get kind of evenly here uh, even links out and then you're just going to bend it towards you and that's going to create a perfect size hoop you'll want to bend it a little further than it needs to go because if you don't then it won't be perfectly straight down the legs will not be and that's it right there 
then you got a perfect tube. So I'm going to do all of these and then I will get back to you and we'll show you how to further bend these if you want to create more unique supports. Depending on what size metal you pick, this could be a little more difficult to do or easier to do. These are pretty easy. The thicker, thicker piece of metal was a little more difficult, but it will support more weight, obviously, without bending. Of course, it would take a pretty good amount of weight that I think would be above any plant that you're planting in the garden to bend these. And it may take a little practice, but you'll figure it out after a couple of them. So you can see here that I now have perfect U's. I've got nine of them and I'm going to stop here. This is what I want, a perfectly shaped U. Now this is going to depend a little bit on the tree size. So you do want to find a tree that's probably going to match a tree trunk that's going to match how you want these bent. Of course, that tree trunk that I put, put this around is not this big around. Um, so it's not going to be like a perfectly sized hoop. You don't want to put pick something the same size you want. You want to pick something a little smaller or the hoop will end up way bigger than you want it. But at this point, what you could do is you grab a piece of two by four or some other wood and you put it across where you would like the legs bent like this and you stand on it. And then you bend these legs up if you're wanting to create a different type shape support similar to the gardener supply ones I showed you there. And then that is it. At this point, you could spray paint these. These are made of steel, so they will rust a little bit. Um, and in fact, after they rust a little bit, they'll be a little less noticeable in the garden. After they get a little rain on them, it won't take them too long to rust. And then you'll be on your way to something that's kind of more hidden in the garden. So I'm going to go grab a rubber mallet because these are really easy to put into the ground. And since it kind of rained the other day, it may actually be super simple to just press them with your hands. But I want to have a little more support just in case I run into a rock or something and need to pound them into the ground a little more. So I'll be right back. So I wanted to get this project done a little earlier before these hydrangeas had leafed out so much. But because the weather had been so warm, they have come back with a vengeance this year, much er earlier than usual. So you want to be a little delicate with some of the foliage. I'm just going to put the, the uh, leg right here where the other leg is. And the back one, a little further back around where the same one is. I do not have them supported in the back because I don't have an issue with them falling back. But I also want to protect some of the perennials that I have up here this season. And we'll see how far we can just push this in the ground since it has smaller legs. This is kind of easier than the last version because it does have some thinner supports there. And that is it. So you can see it still has a little movement to it. It's not going to keep these hydrangeas super upright but it will provide enough support that they're just not falling everywhere if we get a really hard rain. This is the fifth year of this hydrangea hedge, so it's getting really massive and beautiful. And I did just come through last year, as you know, and planted a bunch of new perennials like Jacob's Ladder, there's some ferns, there's some Hakanakloa, some Virginia per pig squeak, and some different type ferns to spread around. These are Autumn Brilliance, I believe, and they're not looking too great right now. I'm hoping they made it. Some of the other ferns are already showing some growth in the ground here. They're starting to pop up. Tiny little fronds, but I hope a lot of the plants come back well. If not, that's okay for this year, and I'll worry about that in the fall or after I get a lot of this other stuff done. So I may not need this mallet, as I mentioned. Let's see, we'll just try and get this in the ground best we can. There we go. Be aware of any drip irrigation you have in the ground. You don't want to puncture anything. So that will just make a mess. So if you meet some resistance, realize that you might have something underneath there that you don't need to puncture through. Some of these limbs are really tender too because they're brand new fresh growth within the past couple weeks. And I'm not too terribly concerned about hiding 
these things because like I mentioned in a few weeks you won't be able to see they're here anyway. And this won't capture necessarily all of the stems. There'll be some stems that still kind of come out of the bottom, but that's okay. I just want to make sure the most of the blooms on top don't end up reaching to the ground if we get hail or we get a lot of heavy pouring rain or really bad wind storms. This will help keep them contained a little bit and not blowing everywhere. Now, as I mentioned, this is incredible by Proven Winners. I planted these at least five years ago at this point. So this is their fifth growing season. And they have much stronger stems than the old school Annabelle hydrangea, which you're probably heard of quite a lot. It's known as a smooth leaf hydrangea and they produce really big, wonderful white balls of flowers. And they do have stronger stems, much more so than Annabelle. But like I mentioned in situations where we get a lot of wind, or a lot of rain, they still will droop a little bit and look uh, pretty bad for a couple days until they recover. And so hopefully this will help throughout the season and we'll test it out and I'll keep you updated on how this is looking right now. The plants are doing incredibly. We're approaching our last frost uh, pretty soon here. I don't know that we will have another frost, but I don't bother covering these if we're gonna have a frost. It's a little protected being close to the house. They bloom on new wood, so you don't have to worry about um, freeze really damaging the buds or anything and they are going to look spectacular yet again this year i just know it thank you guys for following along and remember in a world full of hate be a light take care everyone bye